All right, so I'm here to show off a particularly uh, particularly cool deck and game. Now, the particularly game part will be at the very end, so if you want to check out that part, do so. But in the meantime, we're going to be checking out this cool deck. Um, this is playing, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this guy just takes like a long time for some reason. I'll speed it up a little bit. All right, so I'm playing uh, the Gwentleman Snap uh, the Gwentleman Snapshot Snapshot, if I can speak. Uh, buffing Skellige with Crack on Crate. So basically, what this deck wants to do is that it wants to use the the synergy between this broadsword guy and the uh, light chips or whatever they're called. So basically, the light chip is going to damage the unit to the right by one. And then gains two strength. So the problem is you're only gaining one strength a turn, right? That's not all that great. Uh, it's like half reverse weather. And you don't really... And it starts off at only six strength. Uh, so to really make this combo shine, you also use the broadsword. When the broadsword is damaged, it'll soak in the damage. And then two turns later, if it is damaged, it will heal itself back up. Or it'll reset itself to base strength. And then buff itself by two. Strengthen itself by two. So what this allows you to do is that it allows the one hit. Yeah, it's called light long chip. It allows you to hit the unit to the right by one and gain two, but you're healing back that one damage and also gaining two base strength. And since these, this uh, the broadsword is not regressing, so it doesn't reset in the graveyard like light long ship does. Uh, it allows you to bring back a really powerful unit if you can manage to revive it on the last uh, on the last round or whatever. Uh, it's actually not all that great. It could be regressing, and I think it'd still be a pretty good card. Or it, it's, it would still be a playable combo, just maybe less powerful. But uh, so in general, you kind of want to, you really want uh, long rounds, right? Because you want these units to proc as many times as possible, and you want them to proc off each other as much as possible as well. Also, this is kind of like a minor counter to weather, but that's it's a little bit difficult to make happen. It's not, it's not that reliable. It's not like. <laughs> Uh, the other Redanian knight, which I think is better at doing that. Okay. So basically, I had gotten my combo set up and I had set out my Morkvarg. This gives me a little bit of round two assurance or round using it in round two assurance. Right. So I got the combo off and he's just going to pass, which is good for me. Surprisingly, he's using crowns. I kind of like that, though. Okay, uh, so in this round, I'm going up against Aridin, right? So this guy has a lot of weather, and he has like a lot of relatively low tempo plays that pay off in the long run. So knowing that, I don't want him to have a long three, a uh, long round three, because I'm pretty sure he can beat my uh, my round three. A lot of my strength comes from true like long rounds, but I think his long rounding is a little bit better. Just as like an Axeman deck, uh, they're they can take advantage of a longer round much better than most. Uh, so basically what I want to do here is I just kind of want to get off some of these cards that are less valuable, like Avalak, uh, the nine strength discard, and maybe things like uh, I don't know why I'm blanking on the five strength gold unit, but get rid of some of these cards that aren't really all that useful, and instead look to round three to just... Um, to slam these 13 strength uh, pirate captains in addition to my hero ability, which is uh, an incredible amount of strength. That's kind of like a weird offshoot of this deck. Uh, to utilize deck thinning, to use these uh, these pirates, and then you use the pirate captain with their base strength of like, I mean, boosted strength of about 13 or 14. It's pretty good. It's not... I've, I've definitely found some... Anti synergy, I guess, because you don't really want to be playing those. You want to be playing all the synergistic effects you can get off, but they're still really powerful in situations like you'll see here pretty soon. And also, they're pretty good for uh, for tempo. Like if you're starting to, because this is kind of, it takes a while to set this combo up, right? You have to play one unit, two unit, and then you have other things like Mark Varg and the pirate that you kind of want to slam down uh, without getting passed on. Uh, similarly, cards like Avalak. So uh, using your hero ability in, in addition to the 13th strength pirate captain is a huge swing in tempo. So if you do happen to fall behind a little bit setting up your combo, you can still come back in one card and win the round. Uh, similarly, you can try and slam that tempo down against, uh, like I was playing against a monster deck today, earlier today, where he played his, uh, I went first, I played pirate, 
He went second. He played the Hound, I believe. And then I just went all in on my hero power and went like 23 points up or something crazy. And then he was forced to pass. Uh, or I went ahead and passed. He went two cards down, which is pretty good for me. Or rather, I think... Actually, he didn't pass in that situation. He just... Or rather, I didn't lose the round is what I mean. It's really powerful. This deck has a lot of interesting aspects to it. Like, you have high tempo plays. You have disruption. Uh, Coral, that's her name. Why couldn't I remember her name? Yes, you, you have some really good disruption options. Uh, the only thing I really dislike about it, it's not just that it takes uh, long rounds. That's something you can kind of force yourself through careful play. But what really annoys me is that your combos can be completely shut down through things like movement. Like, in particular... Um, not even just like destroying it, like which is a very common thing, but just simply moving it to a different row or like putting something in front of it uh, is enough to shut down your two card combo. And those two cards are less are pretty not very valuable bronzes on uh, by themselves. Right. You don't want to just play those cards for their base worth. You need to get, uh, let's say. Three turns off before they're actually good. OK, so I got to, I got to this point and uh. But it should be pretty obvious what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to bleed them out as much as possible while trying to get off synergy. And as you saw over the course of this, I actually... Um, or no, it was a different game. In a different game, I kept getting moved around and it completely wrecked me. Uh, that's why I went off on that little rant. But in this case, I made sure that... I didn't use my... Uh, my 13 strength pirate captain. I didn't use my hero ability. But I use absolutely everything else because it's Pyre Captain and my hero ability are both super high tempo plays and very limited amount of cards. Whereas a lot of these other cards will give my opponent more opportunity to try and uh, play more. Or in other words, it's just kind of like uh, if you go back to the bleeding video that I did the other day, you'll be able to see or on, uh, understand on a deeper level what I mean by bleeding. And basically, I'm just using bleeding again in the situation. Even though conventional knowledge would have you try and stick it out in a round three, I know going up against Aridin, my round, that round three is going to be really tough, and I can't necessarily beat it. So I wanted to try and use the other aspect of this deck, which is the Pyre Captains. And luckily, I got all, I got, uh, I'm, I'm going to be able to play all three of them, which is really cool. So I play the first one. I play the second one. This is important. Uh, now think to yourself for a moment why I would use my hero ability now because I believe this is objectively the correct play. Okay, and if you, and if you guessed because I want to avoid Scorch, you would be absolutely correct. If I had played this 13 strength Pirate Captain uh, on, a, on another row, uh, of course it would, be, it would always be on another row because uh, you don't want to get hit by Igni. Um, but he would just be able to Scorch and I'd lose 26 strength. Now if I use my hero ability first... And then I put the Pirate Captain down. I only lose 16. It's a difference of 10 strength. Of course, it's pretty unlikely that you use a Scorch, but still, that can be game or uh, game winning or losing. And of course, I don't play any of them on the same row. I try to separate all of them. And there you have it. There's really nothing you can do by this point. Also, he has Marigold's Hailstorm, which is also another reason why I didn't necessarily want to go to a long round, uh, because a lot of people are taking... Or too long of a round, rather, uh, because a lot of people are taking Marigold Toastrum right now. So this is somewhat like you wouldn't ex you wouldn't necessarily encourage someone to not take the long round when playing this kind of deck, but knowing that there's cards like Marigold Toast Hailstorm and that there's a second aspect to that deck, I use combine both of those to make the decision. That I was going to have a long round one, a long round two, and a very short round three. I'm trying to think if that was objectively correct. I think it's as correct as you, as you can get. Also, notice that he had these, uh, these two ships that would have just buffed all of his other units by like six or seven or something like that. So it would have been even more catastrophic to try and play out the previous round. Like if I had just played a one pirate captain, yeah, it's like 13 strength, but then he just... Uh, slams down one of these ships and then he instantly clears that and then I've gained basically nothing whereas if it, I wait for him to play the ships now they're a lot less useful or a lot less uh, value even though the value wasn't all that close but yeah okay 
So basically, this is a really cool deck. I'm really enjoying it. I'll leave a link in the description for it. And two, sometimes you need to change your game plans depending on the matchup. And meta. Thank you for watching.